I have an interesting one here today. This is a Thompson laptop. I picked it up off Amazon for an incredibly low price. I think it was like 230 Canadian dollars, something like that. Very, very cheap. So basically I picked this up because it's a super affordable laptop and you can get it on Amazon, at least on Amazon Canada. Some people aren't comfortable buying used laptops. And so, you know, a lot of times buying a used laptop is a great option because you can get good value out of them, but sometimes you're not comfortable doing that. Um, either it's not safe, there's nothing in your area that you could buy, or you just don't know what you're looking for. This one here was just on Amazon for a super low price. So I decided eh, I'll pick it up. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything special, not by a long shot, but hopefully it just gets the job done. So let's see what we get. We'll move the laptop to the side. Let's see what we get on top of that information. There's a quite the manual. It's basically just going to tell me there's a laptop. More in there. What else do we have? A charger. So barrel style charger. Yeah. Yeah. That that is plastic. It's they said it's plastic. It's colored to be metal, but it's not actually metal. It's actually plastic. So that is very much plastic. That's fine though. Um, it's a very cheap laptop. I would have been shocked if it was metal. It's tungsten color. So the top is just a 15 inch generic laptop. Um, you know, the printing is not good quality, but that's fine. Right left side here, uh, we have our barrel plug power in. We have USB-A, looks like it's a three point something. HDMI and USB-C, so that's pretty good. We actually get USB-C and USB A and then of course HDMI on the left side, right side, it's got a lot of ports. Uh, USB A, another fast one, a slow USB A, micro SD card, RJ45 Ethernet port. It's a little cheapo quality there, but that's again, a little cheap laptop. And headphone in. Bottom is a port there, I believe that's for an SSD, 2.5 inch SSD, but we'll have to see. Speaker grills there, uh, intake fan and a rubber foot there. Let's have a look on the inside real quick. And then, there we go. So there's actually a screen protector on it. That's interesting. So a screen protector on it, it's actually a matte screen. Uh, generic kind of keyboard thing, black. Trackpad, interesting, yeah, and that's plastic. So it's plastic, it's metal colored. It is not actually metal, what they say. But uh, yeah, that's, I don't know, let's plug it in, get it fired up and have a look at it. Okay, let's take a look inside the laptop. First things first, I wanna look underneath this door here. I believe there's a SATA SSD slot in here. Yep, so it's got a little SSD uh, for a 2.5 inch SATA SSD to be put in there. So basically, if you have yourself a SATA drive, which I have many of them, you can, without taking off the bottom of the laptop, which is nice, I don't always wanna take off the bottom of a laptop to access simple upgrades like storage. Um, a lot of people are uncomfortable taking off the bottom of their laptop. Yeah. yeah. So you just close that up there and then you have an SSD in there. That's cool. I mean, that's a really nice feature. You can basically add an SSD in there um, without having to you know, take apart the whole laptop. Or are we gonna have some type of hidden screws up here? Here we go. So that's that off there. Just make sure you take out that little hidden screw there. This is just plastic. Uh, speaker grill, air intake. The quality of the plastic is fine. This is just plastic, but it's fine, to be honest. Here's a look inside the laptop. So that's where the SSD went there. Totally fine there. Uh, the speakers are there, yeah, they're okay, to be honest. Battery is not great. It actually, you know, it's 65 watt hours, or so it claims. You'll see when I get to the battery section, what's going on with that. Uh, basically, it's not a great battery. Uh, the daughter board over here with the USB and that looks all fine. The fan here is kind of annoying. Um, you can see like it's just a blower style fan to blow air out and it should be fine overall. Um, it doesn't really have like thin, dense fins or anything like that, but it's not a super hot CPU as it is. Uh, the motherboard here looks like it may also accept a GPU on some models or something like that, or maybe a different type of CPU, a larger CPU or something like that. It's actually pretty decent upgradability on this laptop. You have upgradable Wi-Fi here. It's nothing special, but it does have Intel Wi-Fi, which is good. Uh, the Intel's, the Wi-Fi is actually very fast on this laptop. SSD is some off-brand fast speed thing. Again, it's upgradable though, 2280. Single RAM slot. So this only has eight gigabytes that come with it. And it's uh, Heo disk, another off-brand thing. But you can just pop this out there and put in more RAM. So it is gonna be single channel 
but if you want more RAM, it's a budget laptop, you could easily just get yourself a 16 gigabyte stick for relatively cheap or even 32 if need be. So it's nice that it has upgradable RAM, upgradable storage, upgradable Wi-Fi, more upgradable storage down here because it has an SSD. So all things considered, um, it is actually very upgradable. Okay, let's have a look at the specs here. We're booted up into Windows. I don't actually remember <laughs> what I bought. So let's just check real quick as a reminder. Uh, so oh, it's a 10th gen, so 10210U. That's actually a decently acceptable CPU. It's going to be 10th gen, so it's not you know super recent or anything like that, but it is a quad core. Yeah, true quad core processor, eight threads, i5 processor. It's actually very capable. So um, you know, for the price, it's going to be fine. And the processor is actually fine, to be honest. So let's see there. Let's come in here and look at our display. So the display here, it's actually fairly bright, to be honest. It's 1080p. Uh, I believe it's just 60 hertz. Yeah, it's just 60 hertz. Uh, it's fairly bright, actually, all things considered. It's not going to be, you know, 500 nits, 600 nits, 1,000 nits, but it's pretty bright. Yeah, so it's fine. I mean, the screen's fine. It's, it's a lower color space screen. It's only 1080p, so, I mean, you know what you're getting when you buy into it. You're buying a 1080p screen that's actually pretty bright. And then the color space is a little bit washed out, but it's fine. I don't see any problems with it overall, as long as you know what you're buying. Okay, so we'll just get an audio test here real quick. Uh, yeah, speakers are, they're all right, I guess. Uh, there's no bass, so they're not, you know, music speakers, but they do the job. They're not tinny or rattly. They're not super loud, but again, they're okay for the price. Uh, you're going to use this and you're going to be like, they're fine. It's the same as any like business laptop. You know, if you go to like whatever company, Dell or something like that, and you pick up like a business tiered latitude or something like that, they sound exactly the same. There's no difference. Let's do a quick typing test here and trackpad test. So the trackpad is very large actually. It's quite a large trackpad. This is like a plasticky but smooth texture. This is a semi-textured plastic. Uh, it does feel different. This is smoother than this. Um, the trackpad feels precise though. I don't feel any issues with that whatsoever. Let's see the click here. It's all right. You have to be really to the left. Like the click is over there. As you come over here, you lose the click. So you can tell it's a budget trackpad, but it's fine. Not going to be issues with it. Let's check the keyboard itself. Standard layout, you get a numpad on the side, which is actually nice. Okay, so it's fine. Um, it's a little bit like rattly. That's because there's like a fair bit of keyboard deck flex here. Um, so the deck does flex a little bit, you can see there. Um, when you're actually typing, it's not too bad. Like there's a little bit of keyboard flex, it's not too bad. The key, the keys themselves are actually very snappy. Like they have a rebound, but you can definitely hear like a little feel, hear and feel a little bit of a rattle underneath. Um, to be honest, it's not any worse than an Apple keyboard. It just has like that little bit of a rattly sound because there's probably like a little bit of a dead zone underneath the keyboard. Um, so it's a little bit rattly, but the, the actual key cap is snappy. Like, and you can press the edges of it, right? Like. You can see that there. I can push any edge of the keyboard and it's fairly stable and it actually feels nice to type on. So uh, the typing is actually decent. It's a little bit shallow, like it's a very, very shallow keyboard, uh, shallow keycap, but I'm going to equate it with like an Apple keyboard. It feels basically the same. Okay, now I'm running some Cinebench here. So as a result, it's very quiet, but it's, you know, the fan is going on and off and on and off. I would prefer that it would just be on or be off. Um, the fact that it's turning on and off is extremely annoying. It's something to do with the fan curve, like it's obviously not getting super hot, which is fine, but I would prefer it to, you know, just boost or whatever and just, you know, don't turn the fan on until it needs to be on. Yeah, so here's that annoying fan sound. I'm just doing some windows update. It's not that the fan is going. I would rather the fan just goes, but it has this fan curve where it's like, vroom, 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 uh, which is actually extremely annoying. So I'd rather that the fan just went. It might be something in the, like the tuning of it, um, rather than just having it set to once it hits a threshold, 
being consistent, either lower or higher, rather than going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's probably at the wrong spot, the fan curve, where it's a little bit too low, actually. And it's, you know, it's just getting slightly a little bit warm, then it cools down, rather than letting itself get a little bit warmer. And these 10th gen processors can get warmer without having issues. So that's going to be probably why it's doing that there. Another weird thing is how slow the battery charges on this laptop. It's been plugged in for hours at this point. Um, I don't even know, like three hours maybe? I went and played some Baldur's Gate for like an hour and then went upstairs and made some food uh, and it's still going. I don't understand why it charges so slow. I just want to charge it up so I can test the battery. But I might just look at the discharge rate because this is brutal. And here's a look at some benchmarks, and you can see here that the Cinebench scores are actually pretty bad. I mean, we're looking at in the 2000s for this CPU here, which it should be much higher, uh, probably more around 4,000 or so. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I think that has something to do with just how low watt this laptop is. Uh, battery life is fine, actually. I mean, it took forever to charge up, which kind of sucks, but the actual discharge rate itself is pretty good. You can see here it's dischar discharging at about uh, 8 watts or so on idle with the screen turned way up, so that's pretty good. And then the battery you can see here actually is supposed to be at 6,500 milliwatt hours, uh, but it's coming in at 59. Hundred, um, you know, this thing probably sat on a shelf, I guess, with Amazon for a while, and has just like wear, I suppose, from that. But it's also probably not a very good battery. But you can see here, it's got basically uh, ten percent or so lost, just brand new, which is not great. Uh, the Wi-Fi, however, is pretty quick, so we're getting around five hundred megabytes a second Wi-Fi up and down. So that's pretty good, I guess. Look at the built-in webcam. It is very much overblowing my face here. Um, I guess because it's a really dark scene behind me. Like maybe if I put the light right on my face. What about if I take it away? Yeah, it just having a hard time with the light. I I intentionally sometimes do this where I have like the light behind me off, and then I have most of the light in the front. So definitely overblowing my face with this. You know, the dark scene behind and the light in front. Um, but I mean, it's working, and the polling rate is fine. It just doesn't have really really good you know contrast ratios. Freaking out with the darkness behind. But again, it's going to be fine if you have a meeting or something like that, and you know, you're know you going for a meeting and then you're trying to use a webcam. It's going to be fine, I guess, uh, but certainly not a good webcam. Okay, so what do I think of this Thompson laptop? It's a very tough one to judge. First things first, it's very cheap. This thing cost, uh, I looked it up after, it cost me 240 Canadian dollars pre-tax, so that's, I don't know, like 180 bucks American, something like that. Uh, so it's dirt cheap for like a brand new laptop. Uh, it has some very compelling features to it and some not so great things to it. Upgradability on this laptop is actually fantastic. You get an SATA SSD with a port. You can just put in a SATA SSD, that's awesome. The NVMe that's built in is of course upgradable, so you can get a ton of storage in this thing. The RAM is fully upgradable. Yes, it's single channel, but you're probably not using this for anything super demanding anyways. Uh, so you can easily take this thing to 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes with a relatively low cost RAM module in there. The Wi-Fi is actually already fairly fast. I was getting 450, 400 megabytes a second speeds. It's totally fine. You could upgrade it if you want. It is Intel Wi-Fi, so you could upgrade it. It's fine. Uh, build quality is fine. I mean, it's plastic. It's, you, they made it seem like it might be metal, but it's not. Certainly not. Um, it's fine, I would say, in terms of build quality. Not fantastic, but fine. Um, there's a little bit of keyboard flex that I don't like, and the keyboard itself is a little bit weird. Uh, but it's nice enough to type on. I would have no issues typing on this laptop and doing work on a daily basis. Like, no issue whatsoever. Um, it's totally fine. Uh, speakers are okay. They're serviceable. Screen is surprisingly good. Um, you know, it's not a large color space. It's not going to be 100% DCI-P. Um, so it doesn't have a huge color space, but it's nice and bright. And it has it's an IPS screen with good viewing angles, good contrast ratio, so no issues with the screen. Um, yeah, so it's a really weird one. But then, you know, so far these are all really good things, I would say. You know, maybe the plastic isn't great, but whatever. It costs under $200 American for the laptop. The biggest issue I'm seeing is that CPU performance and that fan. The fan is really annoying. It has that weird, like, and it's constantly doing that all the time. Um, even when you're running Cinebench, like, I just want this thing to just be on. Leave the fan on, just boost and leave the fan on. But I think why it's doing that is the charger that comes with it is only a 40 watt charger, uh, which is very low. Like that's like below a Steam Deck. I think the Steam Deck is 45 watts. This is like this is low. This is like this is like the type of wattage you're gonna get on like a tablet or something like that. 
I tried, you know, running Cinebench on that on this here. I tried running it on USB-C. It does accept USB-C charging, and it just doesn't make a difference. Uh, this laptop charges very slow because of this charger here. But the primary issue is, because um, the battery life is fine, like once it's charged up, the battery life is actually quite good. Uh, but the problem is then the Cinebench scores are horrible. Like for this chip, they're very bad. And I think that's because it doesn't have enough power. Like it's intentionally, they've nerfed this. And I went through the BIOS and had a look, couldn't find any way I could boost it up. Um, so this laptop has been intentionally nerfed in terms of power to, I don't know why, because the charger is weak. Like you could just, they could just put a better charger, like a 65 watt charger in here. Then the CPU could run at full power and it would get basically double the performance. Sure, it would run hotter, but the cooling solution was up to the task. It just, the fan kept going up and down. If it just ran constantly when doing things like Cinebench, it would be fine. So, um, you know, it's a weird one to like recommend or not recommend because it costs nothing. For 180 bucks American or like 250 Canadian, I mean, you can't really buy anything. You certainly can't buy anything new. They're all gonna be garbage, uh, like actually garbage. Um, so really, if you buy like from a primary OEM manufacturer at that price, it's gonna be garbage. You can sometimes find like refurb laptops sometimes on, you know, websites, but they're also usually problematic. They have like TN screens at 200 nits, which is unusable. I'd rather just use this screen. It is way better. Um, and those other laptops, you know, they can be beat up a little bit too. Used market is hit or miss. I mean, in where I live, used market is good. I could probably get a reasonably good ThinkPad for like 250 bucks, uh, pay a little bit more. Sure, you know, it has some advantages and disadvantages. But I mean, at the price, it's a decent buy actually for this laptop because you get a ton of storage. You can upgrade the RAM quite a bit. The CPU performance is a little bit weak. It's still going to beat out something like an N95 or something like that, even with its like deprived state where it doesn't perform as it should. It's still going to beat out those, like just in raw performance. Absolutely. It's still a better processor than those things there. So compared to a lot of laptops in its price bracket, it's actually decent. Um, I would urge most people, if you have the ability, everyone's different. Like I'm not one of these laptop reviewers who's like, just spend more, bro. Like, yeah, people can't always spend more. Uh, that actually makes me angry when people do that. So if you can afford more, um, like say this is 180 American, 250 Canadian. If you can throw on like an extra $100 uh, American, you can probably get into like a somewhat of a slightly more decent laptop. Um, that's what I would try to do. But if you can't do that, you know, if you're very financially constrained, this is actually a decent buy. So I think that's what it's gonna come down to. You know, if you're looking for a laptop and you, you just don't got the cash flow to pick up some like $500 laptop, sure, it's fine. Actually, all things considered, there's actually a lot of compelling things about it. Um, but if you're just looking for a laptop and you have a decent amount of cash flow and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll just save some money, um, you know, because I can, but you know, I have the ability to spend a bit more, I'd probably just spend a little bit more. Um, just the, the CPU is just not, performing as it should uh, because of that wattage there. Um, but all things considered, yeah, it's fine. It's actually relatively decent.